Leo, welcome back to the Luck Management Podcast, part two with our guy, John McBride. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Carter. It's good to be back. Part two episode. I don't, I don't think it's episode 47, but uh, no longer. No longer. We I can, guess uh, we'll, we'll make it 50. I think it's 56 now. So, wow. You know, hey, you've had some pretty impressive guests on here um, since the last time I saw Rex Fluger. He's a fan of his growing up, and uh, yeah, he's a beast. <laughs> no, he, yeah, no, I, I listened to it. I really, really enjoyed what he had to say. He was one of those people that was just like so happy about life. I mean, even with his mother um, yeah. getting cancer and uh, just the hardships that he's dealt with. You look at a guy like that and you just see him keep smiling and it, it's really motivational for you to just grow and say like, Hey, if he can do it, I can do it too. Yeah, absolutely. You wanted to ball like him, didn't you? <laughs> hey, I, I, I remember watching highlights of him when he was at modern day and you know, I was, was it four or five years younger than he was. And I told myself, I want to dunk like that one day. And yeah, unfortunately never got to that point, you know, was able to, Fortunately, have a you know one or two dunk package, but uh, was you never able to. It, though, right? I saw you dunk it a few times, two a couple hands. times, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately didn't didn't have uh, the tricks that he had. Bro, grass is always greener at one point, man. I was happy when I could hit the backboard, <laughs> <laughs> and I sometimes I would go, I would jump up on the net, and I'd pull myself up to the rim. And then I'd be like, yo, somebody get a picture. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Somebody quick. <laughs> it was like, uh, what's that movie? Uh, like Mike. Like Mike. <laughs> but he's he's hanging from the rim and he's five foot two. It's like, how did he get up there? Who was that? Uh, L- Lil Bow Wow. <laughs> Lil Bow Wow. Elite movie. That like got me. Great, into song, the great theme song too. I mean, I- I'm not going to lie. Yeah, exactly. I, I'd be walking uh, to North Dome last year, and I'd, I'd be playing that in my earphones, you know, just getting ready for a, a good afternoon of basketball. Dude, and that was an epic That was an epic movie because you had Vince Carter. Like, all the big stars in basketball were in that movie. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, you know, kind of like Space Jam, too. So, was um, everybody but Mike, right? Everybody but Michael Jordan. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I thought he was – he's on the he's on the cover. He's on the cover. Yeah, no, maybe he did make it in. But I just remember all that. It, like, made me want to play it. Ralph, like, the kid from the orphanage. <laughs> just like, what's up, Ralph? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fun, fun times. But, dude, are you living the luck management lifestyle? Tell me what's been going on in your life. Yeah, man. No, I'm, I'm trying. It's been great. Moved to D.C. about five weeks ago. Just trying to get plugged in slash, um, you know, Unfortunately, we're still on the CPA grind as we were last time. True. We're still grinding, but uh, you know, just trying to take the journey, um, trying to enjoy the journey, and you know, just try and maximize every opportunity that I've been given. But that being said, DC's been great. I'm living uh, at a family member's house out in Virginia. They're nice. amazing. I have such a blast with them. They're just nothing short of extremely fortunate to be with them and you know we were talking about this before but just getting situated with work um just working a yeah, totally accounting consulting role for a defense contractor and it's it's great people are amazing and it's just a great learning experience and you know i'm really 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 happy to be there so you're on that next leg of cpa exam you said you have one coming up on monday uh monday uh october 7th October 7th. So it's coming up quick though. Yep. Yep. How so, you feeling? Dude, I'm, 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 I'm a little worried. I've, I've gotten through the material. I've, you know, starting to review, review pretty heavy. Yeah. Pretty successful on the practice test. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I don't, if you're going into those tests, not nervous, number one, it's either you're just a total stud uh, in accounting, which I don't want want to be or you just don't care and... <laughs> i have a life you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly so my my college coach always said you know the day he was going to quit basketball is the day that those butterflies in his stomach weren't there on game day and um you know Smart. trying to apply that to the cpa as crazy as that sounds but at the end of the day it sucks everybody says it sucks but yeah 
it's it's worth it in the end to get those three letters at the end of your name. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, I deal with CPAs all the time, man. I'm working on the research and development tax credit, bro. I gotta deal with you guys all the time. I gotta tell you, section 174 amortization rule this year sucks. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> See, uh, I mean, I'll tell you what, man. We can do some little counting jokes. Uh, I was gonna joke around that um, if. I became a DJ and I wanted to have an accounting background. I'd be called like based out or based limited. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't get that tax credit. Everybody's yeah. probably listening. Like, who are these nerds right now? I was, I was like, yeah, we, hey, let's, let's get it away from accounting. Let's, you know, let's get back to the luck management. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get back. Let's get back to the things that matter. Um, exactly. No, I mean, that's one thing too. It's like, you want to get good at that craft, but you don't, it's not your life, right? right. Like it's, it's right. a means to an end. It, it, builds you in other ways that allows you to progress in your career and then it allows you to push and do things that mean more to you um, right. whether right. that's travel whether that's investing kind of that whole world exactly so, exactly i appreciate that and dude it must be nice being home with family like that's got to be oh, sweet it, it's great man just uh you know got a, got a room down here in the basement um chilling in the basement chilling in the basement man so it's it's, it's been great um only a few minutes from work, so not really too bad. Going to DC on the weekends, so free rent too. Free rent, um, probably so very, good very, home cooked meals also. Absolutely, so very very blessed, uh, very fortunate, and um, you know, if you got any ideas how I can repay them, you know, I'm all, I'm all ears. Go oh, shout out of the week, man. Shout out them. Yeah. Hmm. Thinking about that, I think maybe if you do like a dinner once a month like a nice no. dinner once a month or you do uh that always that always works uh pretty well or just like take him to a sporting event or something yeah. i know dc wow. has a ton of that um or you take them to a class like i don't know what what they enjoy to do but you could just do like hey let's go do a cooking class together yeah. like i paid yeah. for that yeah. or well, like I'm a not... sip and paint <laughs> Yeah, that's how, that sounds pretty good too. Or just be like, I'll do your taxes for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if they want that right now. <laughs> not yet, right? Yeah, not yet. Not <laughs> You're gonna yet. wait till you get those three letters. <laughs> give me, yeah, give me a few more years, dude. I mean, it's cool to see that like you're kind of starting to feel it out. What you you've been there for about a mo month or two? Yeah, a little, little over a month. Started to, you know, get involved. Notre Dame Club at DC has been amazing. Um, Incredible, dude. Yeah, it's um, met some really, really cool people through that. It's funny. I don't want to misspeak outside of this, but there's like a, almost like a young alumni sect and then kind of like an older alumni sect. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was at a bar called the Dubliner Saturday for the game against Ohio State. Packed bar, man, shoulder to shoulder. And we all, you know, all were disappointed at the end of the night, but don't bring it back. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Look at how I'm scared for this weekend too. But no, man. I mean, I think that's a good topic. Like, let's talk about it. first. Just on top of the Notre Dame clubs, I am so impressed. I have gone to the Notre Dame clubs in Houston for each yeah. game watch that I'm here in Houston, and time and time again, it's cool people, young yeah. and old, parents, grandparents little kids wearing like their Notre Dame, uh, like Irish jerseys or cheerleading outfits. Yeah. It's awesome. It's, it's this place called Penny Whistle Pub and they, they flow the Guinness and they ha each have like a press on top of the Guinness. So you can okay. like put a picture of Audrey Estime on it or like Notre oh, Dame. I've, on I've it. seen that. I've seen that on your story and I was wondering um, how they did that. Yeah, dude, they have, they just have like fun things. It's all pretty cheap too. And every time you score, they bring out jello shots, which is pretty pretty funny. Um, but I would say that, like, if you are in a city that has, uh, you know, some things going on, D.C. is great for that. Houston is awesome for that. You can get, like, 50 people coming to a game watch or 40 people, um, yeah. even more in your case. And that's, like, people talk to me and they're like, what? You guys have that? Yeah. It's special. It's awesome. It, it's it's really cool just how the network rolls and 
how great the people are and how welcoming it is. And, you know, doesn't get much better just watching Irish football with, uh, you know, a bunch of your newly acquired best friends. Family. 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 Right? There we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I will say on that too, like, just one story to completely go full circle on it is I went to Colorado Springs this past weekend and I'm visiting my girlfriend and uh, we go meet on Colorado Springs because she's in Pueblo. And Pueblo is like not that nice, but Colorado yeah, I've Springs. I've driven through Pueblo before. Yeah, you can, you can keep driving, right? Ah. Um, <laughs> and Colorado Springs is beautiful. The Air Force Academy is out there. And we're like, oh, we're going to be playing Ohio State. Like, we should go somewhere to watch the game. I go online. I look up Notre Dame Club of Colorado Springs. They don't have one for that, but they have one for Notre Dame of Southern Colorado. And okay. where they were located was literally at this bar called Summa. It was a converted uh, firehouse turned into a bar that they had all the game watches there. It was like 10 minutes away from where our Airbnb was. Yeah. So Saturday night, we're like, you know, let's go do it. We love sitting with Notre Dame people. There's nothing like watching the game with Notre Dame people. Um, sometimes you get some crazies, but we kind of got the epitome of that. But we got it in a different level. So usually I'm seeing a lot of younger people at the Houston club. We went to this game, game watch, and there are about 30 people there, but they're all above the age of 55. Like, they're at least 55, 60 years old. You have some people that were like, I graduated in 71. I graduated in 66. And the level of just screaming at the TV, <laughs> it's like, oh, I see my future now. <laughs> <I know laughs> like but craziness. Yeah. It was so fun, though. Yeah, no, dude. I'm. I was disappointed. Obviously, the end result. We could we could spend a couple hours talking about what what could have could have should have woulda. But looking forward to this weekend. Hopefully, they bounce back. And then yeah, I'm not worried. I think we win by two touchdowns. I know it's only five and a half. And Mike Elko, he's a good coach, yeah. Notre Dame guy. But like, if we don't come out hot, like I will be surprised. Like I feel like there's a vengeance on this because it's still there. It could yeah, be let yeah. down, but no, no, I, I, I totally agree. I, th I think we'll bounce back, and then, you know, got to get through. Um, is it Central Michigan? And then no, Louisville. The Louisville, next... that's right. At at, at Louisville, or and... Louisville, as it's supposed to be said by some people. Louisville, yeah. And then USC, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Ready to get there. Got a lot of friends coming back. I think you said you're coming back, right? Bro, oh, I'll be there. So let's go. I, hey, I, I tell you what we need to do. When when are you getting in? So I fly into Detroit and I'll get in around one, and then Reed and I are going to drive to campus. So on Friday or Saturday? By, like, Friday. Okay. So hopefully get there by like four, maybe yeah. golf like at five o'clock or something. Well, dude, I, I was saying, I, you know, I, I could probably scrounge some clubs together, but I may have to go to the bookstore courts and. You know, Ooh, a little, little pickup game. I'm Friday down. night. Which, so any anybody listening to this podcast, if you want to hoop, there's a 50-50 shot that there could be a group on the uh, bookstore courts. Bro, I'll be in that groupie. I'll be. I'll give a recap after. <laughs> I was about to say text text AJ. I'll text Henry, Pat. You know. Yeah, um, I think I know at least like eight or nine guys that are going to be back for. Uh, the game so we've been trying to figure out how to do a tailgate we should do like a large tailgate like even if we uh if we pull together say 30 people and said hey let's go buy a parking spot in joyce that's like ten dollars a person yeah and someone's gonna park a car and then we're chilling yeah or you don't have to park a car and just we commandeer a parking spot yep it's just ours <laughs> just say we meet here puts put some chairs and rock and roll all right dude okay you and i okay I'm going to start collaborating with you a little bit and everybody that's listening to this podcast. Let's get it. Let's get a plan together. Let's yeah. get USC rocking more so than Ohio state. It was yeah. so funny, dude. I, um, <laughs> there's like that trade chat. If you want to buy tickets and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I'll go in there. Like today I went in there. I was like looking for OSU. It's our year. <laughs> like Tough, like tough loss overall, but I'm like, just try to have fun with it. At the yeah, end of the day. yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. 
Dude, dude, let's ball, man. I mean, I haven't shot a Do something, yeah. I mean, Saturday's going to be such a long day. I can't say that you'll see me out at, you know, Corby's or Noof's or Ulf's Friday night. Yeah. But prior to Friday night, that's where we're making our money. I'm, I'm getting in Thursday night because I wanted to have a full day on campus on Friday. And Dang, uh, so, yeah, I just I think my flight gets in to South Bend like 930 Thursday night. Yeah, dude, I might so. have to do that. I might have to I might have to change the flight. Take yeah, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm flying through Detroit on Thursday night. So I think they, it says like three seats left. OK, OK. Uh, I'll I'll let everyone know what's happening on the next episode. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, or like a like a little update thing right there. No, that's smart. I think flying due to tr- through Detroit is like just the easiest option. I know it's like a three-hour drive, but like, yeah. I bet they get so much business from that, though, too. I mean, yeah, uh, I think it's easier than flying through Chicago, but oh, Chicago's a mad. Well, we'll, we'll see. My, my my layover is twenty-nine minutes, so Dang. about to be putting on some running shoes, brother. <laughs> so you go? Oh, do you go Detroit to South Bend? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's like a I don't know. 37 minute 40 minute flight yeah yeah dude you gotta you gotta call in and be like oh someone's on the runway <laughs> as i say pull the uh home alone in the airport scene yeah Just... right do something yeah hang man but i'm i'm so excited to be able to hang out and just get back to campus it's one of those things that even if uh like life is going well whenever you just talk about it or you think about the trip go back people just light up it's just nice oh, to light dude, up. I... I've I've been counting down the days. I'm 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 excited. I'm excited to be back. Excited to see people. Um, excited to get to mass and you know. True. You know. Dude, I mean, so in in terms of that, we're gonna have a great time. Um, coming back to like your, this is your first official job, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, I'd love to understand a little bit about what you think initially. You said the people are amazing. Yeah, but tell me what what you think it's like being back in the workforce, or just being in the workforce for the first time. Is it what you expected? Is it not? Like, I, I just want to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, my my initial thought is I feel like I'm back in school, like high, like like before college school. You know, mm. I'm 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 fairly regimented in the sense that I go to bed at the same time. I wake up at five thirty every morning. What time and, do you go to bed? Uh, about like eleven, eleven thirty. This. Yeah, I was, about, I was about to say you texted me a few days ago, like one in the morning. I'm like, damn, this dude's just getting off <laughs> off of work right now. Right, <laughs> dude. Sometimes, man, it's a grind. Hey, those nine yeah. fifteen, bro, ten fifteen. You got to be yeah, ready. Exactly. So, but I, I say that in a really in a really great way. Like every day, I go to work, loving what I do, loving the people that I'm there. It, it, it's mainly just from a learning experience. For so long. Like you said, it's my first job. For so long, I've just been a textbook learner. And it's been, okay, here's the example in the textbook. Fundamentals. Yeah, exactly. But at some point, you got to be able to you know, do your own thing. You got to be able to create your own style. And being in the real world and seeing real life examples, and that's probably been the coolest thing that I've had to adapt to is that when I'm asked to do something, when I'm asked to solve a solution, um, excuse me, solve a problem, give the solution – but um, just solving solutions, brother. Yeah, solving solutions, baby. But at the end of the day, there is no screw up. There is no, you know, half button this. Like whatever I do, it it this is a client's problem that I've been tasked with parts of it to correct or find a solution for. And I think that's really the anymore. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, I think that's really the coolest part is just having a purpose and like I said, man, I'm I'm just happy to be there. Love learning. Try and as be as coachable as possible. Somebody has a suggestion for me, you know, yes, sir, let's roll. Uh, yeah, I got you. I'll 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 take that on my plate and Yeah. You know, just go going from there. Ayo, this episode is sponsored and brought to you by Charm N D. Charm N D specializes in creating unique and authentic sterling silver vials and real 
items from around the Notre Dame campus. Each charm is carefully handmade and contains a little piece of the fighting Irish spirit. Vials filled with dirt from the iconic main quad, pellets from the hollowed ground of the Notre Dame football stadium, wood shavings from the seats of the stadium, 24 karat golds from the Notre Dame football helmets, water from the serene St. Joseph's Lake, candle wax from the peaceful grotto, water from the Notre Dame reflecting pond, and holy water for added blessings. Charms are priced at between $20 and $30 and can be customized to your needs as a necklace or a lucky charm. Check us out at charm underscore ND at Instagram. Our charms are a perfect gift for any Notre Dame fan or alum. So go Charm ND and go Irish. Now let's get back to the show. No, that's cool. And that's the way that you need to do it. I think sometimes it's really hard to just have a ton of feedback. Like my, my business and where I work is a ton of feedback. Yeah. Like get up in front of everybody. And we kind of want you to fall on your face because that's where you're going to learn. Right, right, exactly. But, yeah. at, you know, at that same point, I, I really think if you don't have that mindset or something more positive – I've seen enough people or heard enough people talk about how much they hate their job or how every morning, how every morning is a grind and it doesn't have to be easy by any means, but like I've, I've really, since this summer been, you know, listening to podcasts and try and get into that optimistic, positive, natural dopamine high where you're just kind of gliding and yeah. it's not a drag it's like I said, it doesn't have to be easy, but it, it's, you know, you make the most out of the opportunity that's been given to you. And I kind of mentioned a, a little bit before we just got recording though. It's like, you think you're hitting this one level and you're like, Oh, that's it. Like then I've arrived. Guess what? There's seven, there's eight, there's yeah. 10 different things that are just going to pop up that next second. Yeah. Uh, and I, even for me, like it, partially for me, sometimes that's part of the rate because you want to you want to just kind of get on that level and glide a little bit, right? You want to yeah. hit that cruise control. But someone told me, and uh, I mentioned this to some uh, like a couple times, is like you're looking, you're at a hospital, and you're looking at a heart rate monitor. Yeah, it's going up and down. That means you're living, right? Yeah. If it's flatlining, that means you're dead. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. enjoy the ups and the downs. Yeah. No, I, I, I've, I've never heard of that, but I like that. It's funny, right? Like I didn't think about that, and when you when you see it that way, <laughs> you're flat crazy. Line. Why not? Yeah. Don't flatline, man. Or flat flatlining line. isn't isn't going to help you. <laughs> no, it will it will not for sure. So you're you're working a good amount. Um, what is the ultimate goal after this CPA exam? So you get through here. Um, what, what do you see, or what do you want? Kind of the the near future looking like? Yeah. Um, CPA is definitely realistically just with work next eight, eight months or so. After that, I would say like, and I genuinely say this, like I, I, I love going to work right now. And I think I just ride that as long as I, I enjoy that. I will say down the line, I just think, having a, having a company where I'm calling the shots and I'm taking the risks and I'm putting my, I can see it, man. I'm putting my neck out in the wind, um, is something that I I'd eventually want to do. What that is, I, I don't really know yet. I've had a couple ideas just with my prior experience playing collegiate basketball. Um, you know, something hey, let's to lab, lo- bro. Let's yeah, lab. I'm, I got I'm you. telling you, um, I've, still have a few connections in that industry and just possibly sitting down, putting heads together, seeing what need there is out there, especially in the, you know, realm of all these extremely, extremely talented athletes getting, you know, a bunch of money and it would yeah, be a uh, really cool thing right now. I'm fairly certain I don't want to go into collegiate coaching. I would, down the yeah. line, love to coach middle school or, you know, my son or daughter's team. But um, 
I just would still like to be involved in athletics somehow. Oh. And may, maybe that's through my own company. Maybe it's getting involved in front office management. But, you know, yeah, just going from there. I think I talked to you about this maybe last time, but I think that the America and, like, the world is, like, the way that people look at America is because of sport. And, like, you were a college athlete. Yeah. So time and time again, like, you had to deal with the hardships. You had to deal with going against the grain and yeah. and battling for that spot. Or, like, you miss a shot, dude, guess what? You're going to have to shoot another one, so better get right. ready. Or you get um, pulled out of the game. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, then you're in, like, oh, in, in no, my position, I in, in my position, <laughs> well, I had one in the chamber, and if it, if it didn't hit, then, you know, get that <laughs> – Get that get that arm wet. Start you know get that arm warmed up because you start waving that towel. Hey, dude, what you got to do is you got to get the crowd control, dude. You got to get the crowd on your side so they're like, it doesn't matter. Keep yeah. them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I I really appreciate that, and I think that's one thing that we look at luck management. When I've tried to do this, I've tried to shape it over the last few episodes that I've been doing instead of just being like. Oh yeah, what are you doing, and and uh, how's that cool? But like, what is what, what's that plan moving forward? Like, you don't have to have it all figured out, and you right. you ultimately don't. But like, if you have an idea, you're in this circle, right? You're in this circle, and you're straight in the middle of that circle, and you need to take steps to get to that outer circle. So, are you taking steps that take you where you want to go, or are you going the opposite direction right. at the end of the day? And I, I, th and I think, honestly, you know, I can answer that for myself and I think y you as well, but it's, you know, first of all, getting a great education, boom, you got Notre Dame on your resume. I mean, that's a pretty damn good, you know, certification, expensive piece of paper that you have, but True. it's, uh, <laughs> you know, de definitely worth it. But at the end of the day, it's getting certified, it's getting experience, it's, I, you know, being a great person, being a great coworker, always being positive. I mean... Um, you know, I, I really believe also having, you know, a pretty faith centered life, um, a couple, right before I went to DC, I went down to meet with uh, coach beard at Ole Miss and he said something to his team no way. that really stuck with me. And he said, he's never met anyone, anyone successful that hasn't had a faith centered life. And I think that varies per person. But for whatever reason, yeah. that really hit me hard. And, you know, that's I think that's a part of it that, you know, you sent me a question. Do you, do you believe in luck or fate? Slash, do we make our own luck? And I think fate is up to the interpretation of the individual, whether that's your religion. For me, that would be, you know, I believe God really has a plan for everything. Um, you know, it could be some extraterrestrial spirit being that leads you on your way just chilling up there with a big white robe and <laughs> exactly i mean Hanging whatever you, clouds. <laughs> what, whatever you want to chalk it up to but in the same sense like i'm a, I'm a true believer and the harder you work the luckier you get so that puts right. you in um stadiums and realms of opportunities that possibly other people didn't do because you worked harder than they did. You stayed longer hours. You went to bed early. You did the right thing, and just seeing seeing where that lands you. Oh, sorry about that. So that actually is I have an alarm that goes off every night at seven thirty. So I'm Central Time here. Yeah, and it's the Grateful Four. So I think this actually really works well with what you were just talking about. And Good I want to highlight Let's go. <laughs> what you were talking about, but. The Grateful Four. So what are you grateful for? Four things that in this moment or just you want to give recognition for? Broadly or specifically? That is up to you for interpretation. Like I can go right – I'll go right now. Like yeah. I am grateful for my boss, Austin. Um, sometimes you look, at, you look at things and you think, hey, I need to get numbers out. He's very much of like, hey, I want you to be in the place and working where you can feel fulfilled. And that's really cool to have in a boss. We're people. We work together. That's relationship yeah. at the end of the day. So that's like, that's one thing I'm grateful for. 
Um, you want to bounce off? You want to you want to give one, and then we'll, we'll yeah we'll yeah I, I I like that little little um you know, ping pong action, but um I I'm gonna keep it more generic, but fam family is a huge thing for me. Um, mm -hmm. Extended family, direct family. Without them, I would not be where I am today. Um, and you know, even even some of my you know best friends from back home or that are around the country right now that technically. You know, we're not blood related, but I, I consider them a brother or a sister. And, you know, you, you don't have to be blood to be family. And. Yeah, sorry, that I, I didn't mean to interject with the and family is number one. <laughs> no, I love that. And family is what will get you through. Give me one second. I'm going to send Reed um, the uh, the invite link. I think he might pop on. for let's, a let's do it. And then two, two, three and four. Or is God Country Notre Dame? So we, we can go on to the next. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, God Country Notre Dame. Like, I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'll go and I'll just say I appreciate uh, family, too. They've, they've been there for me. You, you got to throw, like, throw Olivia in there. You know I'm going to throw Olivia in there. <laughs> uh, don't worry, she's up next. Um, yeah, yeah. It's got to be my family. Just like move into a new place and just live in life in a different world. Uh, and being farther away from them, it's crazy how you somehow get a little bit closer to them. When you're yeah. further away, you can you can be you can take that opportunity to actually build a relationship with them, and it's just gonna push me to do that more so in the future. Yeah. Then I gotta say, Olivia, um, she is killing it. Like she's. In the Air Force, she's flying planes all over the place, Bad and yet she still just has like the the opportunity to be there for me and support me and care for me. It's crazy. Um, it's really quite nice. And then fourth one, I will just say, um, dang, I am grateful for, uh, like, I would say, it sounds like a weird one, but. Facebook Marketplace, like sometimes I'll go in and out and I'll do deals and things like that. I, I saw, I saw you picked up a wrought iron table, or yeah, dude, I've been going, I've been going from like a thirty dollar or like zero from zero to a thousand dollar Facebook challenge. Yeah, and so I like sold a lamp for thirty bucks, used that lamp to buy a mirror, sold that for sixty bucks, and then I bought a wrought iron table for about sixty bucks, and I sold that for a hundred eighty. So oh. I'm like. I'm boosting it up, and yeah. if you look behind me over there, wait, right there, you can see I bought a, <laughs> I bought an old time typewriter. Like wow. I'm just buying crazy stuff or crazy things that I think could, uh, does have value. Like some people love that sort of stuff, collector stuff, things like yeah. that. So I I appreciate and I'm grateful for my mom teaching me like the art of like doing little deals or finding value in things yeah. that maybe don't people don't see value in. Um, yeah. But, I like that. Um, but on top of that, like faithfulness, um, are are you? What's what's your religion? You're Christian, but yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm Catholic, you're and Catholic? you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I know that. Yeah, my bad. No, no, no. You're good. Um, I feel like I meet people from Memphis. It's like you know, it's usually like Presbyterian or something. Oh yeah, Presbyterian, Baptist, Methodist, um, Episcopal. Yeah, all all, all great people. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I grew up Catholic, Catholic church. Um, I'll say find a church out there. I have. Yeah. Uh, St. James, great, great parish. Um, you'll appreciate this. The, uh, the pastor is, uh, the late justice Scalia's son. Dang. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, as Catholic great, as it gets. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, yeah. Great, great, uh, great public speaker, uh, good church gone there a couple of times growing up. But I, I would say just from a faith perspective, definitely grew in my faith, closer in my faith uh, when I was at Notre Dame. Um, you know, it's just, it's great to be in an environment like that. It's, it's great to be around people like that. And um, that being said, i still a firm believer that, you know, God brings people into your life, takes people from your life, gives you opportunities shuts doors, but it's all for, you know, a, a bigger purpose. And, um, I mean, I 100 yeah. agree, man. I mean, just... I, 
a you know there's a plan for everything and yeah you know, my my go to example is growing up my dad went to law school at Notre Dame. My mom went to St. Mary's. That's where they met. For 18 years, up to my senior year of high school, Notre Dame was my dream school. I was willing to give up basketball for everything to go to Notre Dame. Right. Didn't get in. I joke with all the you know undergrads there that they were smarter than I was, which is not, not too far from the truth. No, dude, not true. Uh, <laughs> not true. Don't give them that. <laughs> but um, that being said, I was willing to give up everything to go to Notre Dame. And that led me to Ole Miss where I had an unbelievable four years kind of, you know, going back off to that list you sent me, like one of, one of the coolest things I've ever done. It's probably make the NCAA basketball tournament and yeah. just all the memories and just the, the winning, seeing like truly like your hard work come to the biggest collegiate stage. But four years later, you know, was able to go to Notre Dame and check that box off. Dude, it's like, it's the power of and. Like, I was just talking to this one guy, um, David Howitt. He was like a recent episode, and he wrote a book that's like one of my favorite books. And we look at this stuff, and it's like, oh, I can only have this or that. But you were able to have your basketball career yeah. and Notre Dame. Like, yeah. how blessed are you? Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I go to bed every night. And, you know, for those of you that either pray at night or don't pray at night, I remember hearing a priest talk about this once. He said, if you don't have anything to pray for, you don't know what to pray for, just say thank you. It doesn't have to be thank you for anything specific. It can just be a thank you as a general um, umbrella. And yeah, that's beautiful. And, you know, he'll, he'll interpret that how he will. And but along that same lines, every single night I go to bed, I say thank you. And it's talking about basketball. It's talking about. Notre Dame is talking about the friends that are, have been brought into my life. Um, heck, it was Did all part of the plan that the MSM people crossed the MSA people Feb February of uh, 2023. So, Did, well, great, great programs. Number one, number two, two best programs out. There. Absolutely, I think, I think we were the best programs. So. But I, I want to say, man, like you are a faith-filled, like favor-filled person. Like I've, no. I've seen that through you and I see you and like Reed and a few people that I've met through this school. Like you guys have that, like that, that faith behind you and that, yeah. that moves mountains, bro. Well, well that, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, two things on that. Like, I don't know if you have ever watched the chosen on Amazon. I, I recommend it to everyone check it out and it's free. So if you just like look up the chosen, it's just like Jesus walking through his life. I recommend it to anyone. I recommend it to Jewish people. Like enjoy yeah. it, love it. Like it's a it's a funny show actually okay. too. But it's they spend millions of dollars on each episode too. Um, really, so okay. highly recommend. It's him moving through his life, and it starts okay. out of when he starts preaching, and they've got three or four seasons. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. If you if you do uh, learn anything or get anything out of this watch that show yeah, yeah. Um, um and then <clears throat> i love the catholic church and i appreciate how you've been able to find that faith my faith has shifted a little bit more where sometimes have you ever heard of joel osteen i sometimes I have, yeah. go to his services and stuff i love i love his talks and things like that but all that to say yeah if you don't have something to like pray about say thank you but if you if you don't know like oh do i need to be this or that just just believe in something or yeah. believe in that higher power that's there for you. Like, doesn't matter if you're Christian, doesn't matter if you're um, Hindu or whatever. It's like just that belief pattern is really, really strong because there's something behind you, back in you. Yeah. So I appreciate that about you. No, absolutely. No. I, and, and likewise, and, you know, I, I feel like our group at Notre Dame, specifically second semester, because first semester was <laughs> not non existent. But yeah. uh, no, I, I feel like that there's a lot of that there. I mean, people who were Catholic, who were Christian, who were of, of other faith denominations, but, you know, coming together and being able to interact and hang out and laugh and have make some unbelievable memories. And I was actually, you know, scrolling through my phone a couple of days ago and, you know, came up with you, Reed and I on the Spirit of Chicago overlooking you know, the downtown skyline. Which, Good times, uh, bro. Yeah.
Ayo, this episode is sponsored and brought to you by Charm ND. Charm ND specializes in creating unique and authentic sterling silver vials and real items from around the Notre Dame campus. Each charm is carefully handmade and contains a little piece of the fighting Irish spirit. Check us out at charm underscore ND at Instagram. Our charms are a perfect gift for any Notre Dame fan or alum. So go Charm ND and go Irish. Now let's get back to the show. You know, it just se- seems like yesterday we were there and... Were you rocking the turtleneck? You were rocking the turtleneck. Where are you? I was, I was, I was rocking the turtleneck with the Notre Dame pants. The blazer. Yeah, dude. You were dressed to hey, impress, can, my guy. Can that, can that be the uh, thumbnail for uh, the luck management? Uh, you, you better believe this whole week, dude. It's getting posted everywhere. There we go. That's awesome. Well, hey, I know last time I missed a couple questions. Um, and I got to remember where, like, I, I left off. But, like... <laughs> Um, I wanted, we've talked about a few of these, but I wanted to ask, like, if we'll start from like 10 down, um, okay. from there, like if you could have dinner with anyone yep. dead or alive, who would it be? Stevie Ray Vaughan. So yeah. I love probably post summer 2020. Is he blind? No, uh, no, Stevie wonder. Okay, my uh, bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still an unbelievable musician. Stevie Ray Vaughan, he, yeah. he, he unfortunately passed away in a helicopter accident back in like the late 90s. But yeah. look him up. Unbelievable guitarist. Uh, has a lot of covers of like Jimi Hendrix and, um, you know, some of the old old blues guys, uh, B.B. King, Muddy Water. But there's a, there's a video. I think he, he's playing Voodoo Child, so Jimi Hendrix rendition. I don't know if Jimi Hendrix, uh, Jimi Hendrix may have covered it. Um, I'm, I'm really bad, especially in the blues realm. There seems to be a lot of covers and I can't I actually, I haven't dug deep enough to find out who the initial, who the original creator was, but um, I mean, he's playing the guitar behind his back. You can see like just the music flowing through him. And I, I love the blues just being from Memphis, you know, home of rock and roll and or the birthplace of rock and roll, excuse me, but they should move the Hall of Fame from Cleveland down back. Dude, I don't know that. I think that's one of the biggest. You you want to really get me going? It's how. Oh yeah, that that's I, one of the I, questions. What's one of your biggest pet peeves? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say why the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's in Cleveland and not Memphis. Um, I I don't know the Rude. politics that went into that. Somebody somewhere had more money and some inf- more influence than the people in Memphis had, but. I mean, I, I can just name off. I mean, Elvis Presley, BB King, Muddy Water. If you look, True. if you listen to a lot of these interviews recently of like the Rolling Stones, Leonard Skinner, Led Zeppelin, all these guys talk about the sounds coming out of Memphis that influenced their work, and yeah. like specifically Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page. He lives in all like the A minor pentatonic scales, and how there's an interview where he's talking about I took this type of Memphis bluesy sound. And I sped it up and I gave it a little bit more distortion. And that's how I created this sound. And um, it's uh, yeah, really, 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 you know, cool thing that I like to claim from Memphis. And unfortunately, yeah, I, I think Stevie Ray Vaughan's from Austin, Texas. But so there is a little Texas connection. There we go. Hey, <laughs> H-Town, dude. Hustle Town. No, the way that I think about it, too, is like I'll try and translate it back to my life, right? And I love EDM music. And I'm yeah. like, ooh, I wonder what sort of musicians have taken those sort of noises or those um, harmonies and things like that and brought it down into this different yeah. type of music. I might do some further research on that. Because you think just new, like music comes from nowhere. No, there's there's emotion. There's so much feeling yeah. behind it. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, it, so, it, it, it's fascinating. Um music music theory is unbelievable unbelievably complicated unbelievably interesting yeah unbelievably say that 10 times fast <laughs> unbelievably. i would so. say i would say it's one of those things that does make the world go right uh, yeah and that's actually going back to some of the faith filled stuff like that's where i feel a lot of faith like listening to music like when there's a uh, core uh, choir or just people singing like that's that's where like true beauty is. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But if you were to um, go to and you had to make some, like you had one more year to live, like you, you don't have much time left, what's, like, what's on the bucket list for you? I know you said you wanted to start a business. And yeah. You said you wanted to do some big things. But what what do you really want to get done that would just be like, dang. Reed. Oh, we got Reed rolling through. What's up, guys? hey How we doing, John? Good to see you, man. Dude, it's good Probably to see you, to man. As always, but, but saw you recently. Dude, yeah. I, I get to hear that. Uh, I heard that I'm I'm gonna get to see you for the USC game. Yeah, dude, you're going. Absolutely. Awesome, dude. Yeah, it's gonna be a great reunion. Uh, uh, Car- Carter and I were talking. We may have to get like a Friday night under the lights bookstore basketball. Dude, yeah, dude. There's a lot of like, you know, like pockets of reunions we got to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> alumni football game. Uh, <laughs> alumni we really glory days. <laughs> Alumni bookstore basketball that would be fun to play on that court though that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I for the listeners, I was never I never played flag football with these guys, but Reed always had everybody's number. Like it's <laughs> oh, we're, we're playing Reed, you got to lock down Reed. Man, if, if we lose, it's because Reed had a great game. If we win, it's because we didn't let Reed beat us. Like it's, it's yeah, it's, it's good. Cool. So, it all comes well, that was. Reed. <laughs> that was that was you and more with basketball, man. Uh, I don't know about that, but yeah. I think that was me on the basketball. I, I think it's cool. Yeah, no, I, was, I was meant to say when Carter wasn't there. Right, right, right. <laughs> good deal, good deal, uh, dude. That's uh, funny. Dude, um, we were actually talking like, so Reed and I do a Bible study like once a week. We should probably just let you know if you ever want to join us, man. Absolutely, like, no, I, I'd love to. I've, I've joined one here in DC. Um have some great, great people, kind of, you know, young professionals group, but I don't think another Bible study wouldn't, wouldn't hurt me for sure. <laughs> I don't know what we talk about, dude. It's, it's more of just social hour. Hey, if, 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 is C-Gen in there? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we can recruit C-Gen. <laughs> I have we to can recruit start C-Gen. recording, man. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, C-Gen and I have had some pretty deep faith-filled conversations, um, you know, I don't think anything I could say on here, but it's uh, he, he provides some pretty great insight. He's the man, dude. He's the man. Yes. He'll be there for USC. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be fun, bro. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll hit you up, John. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'd love that. For the better. Yeah, that'd be well, cool. Reed, you got a read option today for us? Dude, so you know I was thinking about it. Um, I don't have a I don't have a read option. And I'm not I'm not saying I've I've emptied the tank of all possible read options, but I think I might have emptied the tank of all possible. Read <laughs> he, he's, uh, taking, he's taking the buzz. But, but guess, I off. do have a question. I, I do have a question because I want to bring yeah. something to the table. Okay. Um, and this is one that I, this is my favorite question of all time, probably. Uh, if you guys could could trade places with the main character of any movie, what would it be? Hmm. So it's not it's not your typical read option. It's not like a you know, Rudy. Rudy. No, I'm, j- I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> there you go. I put nothing. Hundred and nothing. <laughs> um, because you got you got your stories like you have the triumph stories like Rudy, like remember the Titans or something like yeah. that. The sports movie Hoosiers, and then you also have. Star Wars and Avatar and some like really cool worlds that would be fun to be in. Uh, like it'd be sick to be a Jedi, man. I don't know. So, I, I, it's one of my favorite movies. So, reason I'm going with it, but I'd probably go with Braveheart and William Wallace. Yeah, that um, came to mind for sure. Just because that was somebody, right or wrong in history, that was willing to die for what he believed in, and he was able to, you know, inspire a bunch of people to follow him and, um, didn't work out for Scottish independence, but I think it's a great, um, representation of valor and courage and bravery and leadership and leading by example. Definitely. Yeah, dude. And yeah, talk about just triumphant moments and experiencing that just, 
joy slash kind of high of, of accomplishing something. Yeah. Uh, winning some of those battles. And I haven't seen it in, in a few years, but I know there were some like some really cool moments where he was just an animal, just a yeah. beast on the field and, and came out uh, with the dub. So that'd be cool. Yeah. Yo, I'm sorry to say this. I have not seen Great Park. Oh, that's one of my it's favorite out, movies, man. It's, 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 a, it's a long movie, so, you know, get comfortable if you do watch it. Yeah. Right, it that's, on, that's my homework list. Ayo, this episode is sponsored and brought to you by Charm ND. Check us out at Charm underscore ND at Instagram. So go Charm ND and go Irish. Now let's get back to the show. <laughs> yeah, by, by the time I see you, I want you to have watched Braveheart. I got you, bro. I got you. That's going to get me running through a wall. I'll give you, give you 16 days. <laughs> All right. Hey, okay, so I thought initially, I don't know why this first ju- jumped into my head, like Jack from Titanic, and I was like, that's not good. He's like, that would that would not go down well. <laughs> no, you're just like, all right, what's the go. biggest movie? <laughs> I was like, maybe maybe somebody that got on the boat after the like from the Titanic survived. Um, but then I thought funny, and I was like, obviously Cody Maverick from Surfs Up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we do animated? A little penguin, oh. yeah, a little penguin. Oh, where I thought like great. Ratatouille, dude, like just chefing up in a French <laughs> restaurant. Um. So it was hard for me to think, because I'm not a huge movie guy, but I will say if there was a show character, I think it'd be Harvey Specter from Suits. <laughs> Gotta what? be Harvey. Have you ever seen Suits? No. Oh, no, I have. I have. I've seen a few episodes. Yeah. Harvey is the, he's not the new guy. He's the one that's established yeah, at the he's firm. established, dude. He, he'll rip you apart. And the negotiator. Like the coolest guy in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, man. That's a really good one. You know, you know, Ty- Tyler Sindel reminds me a lot of Lewis Litt, but no, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, I'm joking. God, let's hope he doesn't hear that. <laughs> I know, I know. T- tell, where are we in the episode? Minute 52. Tell Tyler to not listen to Minute 52. Covers yours. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally send it to him, dude. <laughs> we got to get him coming out for USC, man. Dude, I, I'm actually, t- text him. He's, uh... Just started a new job, and you know, I, if we could motivate him to, uh, you know, if you guys were going to be there, it'd definitely, I think, go a long way in trying to get him there. Because I, I would love to see him. I know you guys would love to see him. Yeah, that'd be cool. I was texting with him, uh, I think last month, just because he was. I knew he was coming to Boston, and so I was like, "Hey, man, if you're ever up here, let me know." Or it's probably two months ago at this point, but. Um, yeah, we talked a little bit about whether it was Ohio State or USC. So yeah. he's got to come to one. I don't know. If you're not coming to USC, when are you coming? Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, right. Do you hate everything? Or... you got to be back for a football <laughs> game. Right, dude. I think I'm going to come back for in the spring, though, just because my brother and stuff. And, like, John, I feel like maybe you might do that just because your sister oh, there. I'll be back for graduation for my sister for sure. Yeah. But right, I might even go to lacrosse game. Like we're we're national champions of lacrosse. Like that's pretty legit. The Kavanaugh, yeah. Kavanaugh brothers are back. Yeah. Oh, they are, huh? Yeah. No one. No one goes pro early in lacrosse. I don't like that. Like, I mean, oh, honestly, they make thirty-five dollars a game. If they're good. making nil money. Uh, then that's probably going to be, you know, more lucrative for them right that's now. Absolutely. Yeah. Wait, the Reed. Who was your character? Dude, I, I go back and forth, but I think it would be uh, Jake Sully from Avatar, just because it'd be sick to be in, you know, be an Avatar and be in that on Pandora. Yeah, God, you're good one. around. Uh, just getting, just getting... <laughs> that crazy athleticism, right? Connecting with nature. Would you be? I mean, you'd be a big blue guy, dude. You'd be I'd out be in the ocean guy. now. No spoilers, but <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Not, not a fan of Avatar 2, but that's neither here nor there. We talked about that for a while with Alex, I think. James Cameron on one of the podcasts. Dude, I <laughs> I know it's, like, crazy. It's three hours long, but, like, I'm here for it, dude. <laughs> like, I'm down to yeah. watch it. Like, yeah, well, I'm, hey, there's more coming, so. Gonna have I know. To. I know. We've got, like, six more movies. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of good choices. 
But hey, dude, we were we were talking here, and we only got like five more minutes. McBride's got to get back to studying, being a nerd CPA. And stuff. <laughs> but uh, it's been a long time since I've asked you the question too. So come and come along and join. We're we're talking a little bit more about some bucket list items that hmm. like, are, are on your agenda. Because uh, I know life has shifted and things go on. So like, what are some of your guys' bucket list? Man, I would I would say. For me, I haven't exactly hit it yet. You know, still got to save up some money and whatnot. But just the travel bug has started to creep its way into me. And for the longest time, uh, love to ski. And I want to go to Zermatt, Switzerland and ski Zermatt. Um, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, Zermatt. Zermatt would probably how we pronounce it in, you know, Zermatt. Miss- <laughs> Mississippi, but um, go to Zermatt, travel there. I'd love to go to Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe. Um, look up the Devil's Pool. Fascinating, just adrenaline. Just you're on the edge of this waterfall in this small pool, looking over, you know, millions of gallons of water just being dumped, and like you're you're oh, almost, thrill seeker. <laughs> a, a little bit, a little bit. And then, you know, I'd love to go to New Zealand. Um, I would love to, I have a friend that I met this, um, work, works at my workplace that, uh, hiked to base camp at Everest. So, um, I, I would love to go to base camp. I don't think I have the desire or drive to put my life in the hands of the mountain um, climb. and climb Everest, but like, I'll, oh, look, I'll, here's John. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, I'll, one of these days, you'll be looking on your Instagram feed, and you're like, "Wow, he, he, I didn't realize he was going up there." He didn't. He told me I wasn't going. <laughs> but dude, that's awesome. Just to tra- travel, in one word. Yeah, dude, it's hard to it's hard to say anything else. Honestly, that's all that came to mind for me, for sure. Um, there's some spots in Europe I want to go to. I got the itch after going there during the interterm week. Yeah, like Paris. By, by the way, they haven't, they're not continuing the interterm week because I think of how much fun you guys had over there. Oh, they're not. Dang. Did, they, did they cut it from the program? They, they, they cut it. it. The, I, I heard that oh, oh, I the, whole, hear. the whole reason for that trip was to give people an international, like, itch to go work internationally, and no one <laughs> went to go work internationally. <laughs> they're like, it's not working. Right. <laughs> I mean, dude, well, you, you get the itch, but, like, it's uh, there's just so many more factors that go into it. Like, if I could put my life on pause in a vacuum for two years and, and work abroad, I think it'd be awesome. Yeah. But it's hard to, like, wait every I'll day. go work abroad. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go on that trip. I'll go work abroad. <laughs> get this thing going. I'll go to London. All right. Yeah, just do it if, for nothing else than just to bring the trip back to, to the MSM yeah. program. Yeah. Like, oh, like, hey, <laughs> it's not working. Yeah. Oh, guys, I'm here. I'm here. You guys got to uh, run it back. Yeah. That's funny, man. Yeah. Yeah. I've got some spots for sure. I think New Zealand would be sweet. Uh, let's, let's get a New Zealand cool. trip going. Let's uh, yeah. circle out fall 2026. Does that work for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I sure. usually yeah. look out that far. Um, <laughs> Spring 2026, no. I don't want to get in front of Notre Dame football weekends. No, Dude, no. You're right, you're right, man, that's important. Like, you better believe all of our friends. If they get married in the fall, in the next couple yeah. of years, it's like, dude, we're not, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> or I'm on my phone. Hey, like. <laughs> Notre Dame plays Alabama in South Bend in like four or five years. No way. Yeah, oh, you bro, can look at the Notre Dame future schedule and like some of those. I know we're not in a conference, but the non-ACC opponents are already scheduled. Uh, so non-con opponents. As big Notre as Ohio Dame. State was, that'll be bigger. Alabama, yeah, yeah. yeah. keep it up. Wow, I don't know if Saban will still be there in four or five years, but hope so. Hey, yeah. next fall, I talked to Reed about this. Notre Dame versus Texas A and M at Texas A and M. Like forty minutes from, or it's like an hour away. A little from college station I, action, a little SEC action. Yeah, we could we could all get a huge crew down there. Man, I I need to get a uh, 
Ole Miss, one side Ole Miss shirt, other side Notre Dame shirt. Just combine the two. <laughs> like, what, what is this? <laughs> Look, where does the outside of you going to school there? Why is this connected? <laughs> Did you have fun? It looks like you had fun for about half of it. But then you, it looks like you you prayed for your sins on the other half. Yeah, of it. yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Naughty, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I would say uh, just on that travel thing, uh, you guys kind of got it pushed off a little bit just because of COVID. Um, but once you get started, man, you just start tumbling. So like, just know that after your first trip, it, and once you have some money in your pocket, you guys will start to just go 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 so don't like don't rush it because it, it's going to come and you guys are going to do something like you guys are going to be able to do it so, we, yeah. um i'm ready yeah well we're coming up on time here john i want to let you get back but hey we might be doing bible study here in the next in the next couple of weeks and stuff and i'll be seeing you guys at, at usc and everything but um appreciate you guys coming on here i, I love having these moments this is like I'm like, dang, that's an hour already. It's like, yeah, dude, it's, 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 it's a quick hour. Um, no, that, thank, thank you for having me, man. It's both great to see both you guys. Hearing that you guys are both going to be there, you know, makes it even. You know, I wish it was tomorrow. Slash, you know, the weekend can't get here, and then just the nature of the beast. I know that weekend's just going to fly by, and um, you know, maybe we can all reconvene at the. Uh, you know, college football playoffs when Notre Dame's the four seed playing Ohio State again, rematch. Ohio State or Georgia or you know, dude, the, the championship is actually in Houston this year. NRG Stadium. NRG Stadium. There we go. Yeah. Boys, yeah. boys, it's all in the plans. Are, are, it's all you here. Say, are you saying there's a couch for me to sleep on? Right over here, man. Right over <laughs> here. Let's ride. Cool. Um, get the air mattress out and everything all yeah. right well yeah. boys i appreciate you yeah read um dude back with the read option let's go can't keep me out the game man can't keep me out the game i'm gonna get in there we're always part of the game <laughs> no no i know i know um well wherever you listen to podcasts apple spotify and now youtube we're on youtube now you can watch our beautiful faces on youtube so keep living the luck management lifestyle. Peace.